Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today is, well, we only have three episodes left until 22 um, ends. And uh, so today, we've got no stranger to the Healthy Wave Vibes. We've got Dr. Teresa coming in. She's going to be talking about chronic fatigue. And I think, I'm pretty sure, a lot of you are feeling the fatigue right about now. For those of you who don't know, I'm Fatima. I'm John. Hi, I'm Cyrene. Excellent. John, do you want to read her bio? Sure, sure. For those of you that haven't seen Dr. Teresa or uh, one of her shows before, Dr. Teresa, like we said, is not a stranger to the show, but she is a functional medicine chiropractor who also was a research scientist at a, uh, a large pharmaceutical company. She has a master's of science in industrial health from the University of Michigan. Her passion is research uh, to solve complex health problems, educate her patients on how to be at their optimum health. And she liked to dispel myth, uh, medical myths with the science of biochemistry and physiology. And she strives to make the, the body function as a natural, uh, function naturally as it should through various methods, such as hormone balancing, toxin removal, nutrient optimization, and cellular energy rejuvenation. She's particularly fascinated by the complex and misunderstood role of iodine in the body and she's been doing um, iodine therapy with her patients since 2011. She's also, uh, an, she's also an international keynote speaker and main lecturer on iodine therapy, as well as performed numerous public lectures on various health and functional medicine topics for over a decade. She believes in a teamwork of integrating various disciplines of medicine to best optimize the long-term health of her patients, ensuring the patient is uh, the one driving their improvements with educated decisions. Personally, she likes to uh, be at the beach. Uh, she likes to bike. She likes to uh, take part in yoga. And uh, also uh, with her two beautiful independent daughters, dogs, and living life through the eyes of God. So let's bring Dr. Teresa on. The snow must be affecting something. I think it's just making everything slow. Here she is. Okay, this is coming on. It's connecting. Just hold on one moment. There we go. Excellent. All right. Hello, Dr. Hi, Teresa. everybody. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Very good. Well, did you know that you're actually our last guest of 2022? Pretty Whoa. exciting. Yes, pretty exciting. So, <laughs> it is. It is. So what is chronic fatigue? I mean, does it, is it, does it come in a single moment or is it a lump sum of things or what is chronic fatigue? It, yes, that's a great <laughs> question because you know, when we hear chronic fatigue, you know, the words themselves makes it sound like, yes, we've had fatigue for a very long time. And that is part of it. People can have a low level of fatigue or something we say malaise when you're just not feeling good for a long period of time and sure that's chronic. But what's interesting is the actual diagnosis of chronic fatigue is very severe fatigue. So it's that low level issue, which is often some other underlying problem that's not being diagnosed. You may be feeling that low level amount of fatigue because maybe you have low thyroid, uh, leaky gut, uh, you have some other infection you're not aware of, some chronic infection going on. And then what happens? Is there some type of triggering event? And it's often, it can be an emotional event. It can be a physical event. It can be um, getting a new infection. You know, if you've already been kind of having this low level background weakness or fatigue, and then all of a sudden something changes, you get the flu. The flu used to be very common. COVID also does it. And this post COVID syndrome is, is very much overlapping with all of the symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. So they're very hard to differentiate. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those symptoms. But it's a trigger. And that trigger can also be things like um, a surgery, a major surgery, a minor surgery. It could be some kind of accident, a physical accident, or, um, you know, you could fall and, and hurt yourself, sprain your ankle, break a bone, or you could just be in a car accident. But a, a main thing is emotional stress and physical stress. So I know we're talking about this in December because it's the holidays. 
And the holidays, you know, is a happy, wonderful time of the year, but also can be extremely, extremely stressful. And there can be those events that if you've been dealing with something underlying that needs to be looked into, and we're going to talk about more of those underlying causes. But, you know, having your family come visit can be wonderful or super stressful. <laughs> having an, something happen when everybody's together. Or many of us have experienced a lot of losses this year and the previous years, and it can be a very emotional time for people. And sometimes when those things, when you're still in that grieving process or they haven't been dealt with or it comes up, can actually trigger you into a chronic fatigue state. Mm -hmm. So we definitely wanna talk more about that, that if, if you're dealing with it right now, what can we do? And you know, keep your eyes and ears out for yourself and for your loved ones. And if you witness any of this kind of going on, uh, you know, we're gonna talk about things that we can help, you know, get it better. You can do a lot of repairing. Some people can get rid of it. It is considered a, a chronic illness though. Mm -hmm. So what would be, you know, I, I think we all know that we, we get stressed throughout the year, just on an everyday basis, we go through stress, whether we recognize it or not, or we're just tired. You know, I, I, I shoveled snow yesterday and I was tired today, but um, what, what would be kind of some of the triggers, like you said, or not even a trigger, but, you know, it's, it's a little bit more than just working long hours or exactly illness or uh you know death in the family like where what would it be at that point where it can help us when understand? it's chronic fatigue what syndrome is, yeah what is that? so the key criteria one it's been going on for more than six months so you know you might feel tired after shoveling snow you haven't had snow for a while and you're like oh my goodness but if it goes away and you get better after two days or maybe even one week, because some people who are really out of shape might take longer, but if it goes away, that's a good thing. Um, but that criteria of the fatigue. So here's the other, it's interesting that you brought up like shoveling snow. So if an activity, that's a pretty strenuous activity, mm -hmm. but people who it's something called post exertional fatigue, when they do any type of exercise, or anything that they're really going to physically exert themselves and their amount of soreness or the length of time it takes to get over that is considered much longer than the average person. Truly, it should take two to three days. So if it does take someone a week to feel better after shoveling snow or doing something, that's a yellow flag. Something can be going on. You know, so that post-exertional fatigue is one of the criteria. It's they look at severity and duration. So the severity, how much pain are you in? Is it relative to what you were doing? You know, you may have been the one just brushing off the snow from a porch and the other person shoveling the driveway for two hours, but yet you are in extreme pain. That's a very severe response. So that's a yellow flag. Or, you know, you just go for a long walk with a friend and you know, so walk, but yet you're extremely exhausted and tired the next day and the day after that. That's another yellow flag. Do those incidences keep happening more than 50% of the time for at least six months? Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, you really need to seek out um, help. You really need to see a doctor at that point. But what I would say, any of those, any yellow flags like that, you, know, you want to nip something right away. You know, why do you feel that way and start assessing other issues? They've added on another criteria. So there's the, um, you know, the fatigue, general fatigue, that post-exertional malaise, not feeling well and, and disproportionate to what it should be, but also non-restorative sleep. So people are like, okay, well, I'm just going to rest and I'm going to feel better, but they don't feel better. They can't seem to recover. They have restless sleep. They can have insomnia and nothing just seems to help. So then the other two exclusionary criteria of, well, do I just have something, you know, I'm getting over an illness or something, or do I have chronic fatigue syndrome? One, again, how long it's been going on. They look at that six months, but the mind actually starts coming into play, start having more brain fog, more uh, short-term memory issues, you know, other just cognitive impairment. That's like whoop, a big check mark. And then the other one, and it's interesting, people really, really do experience this. They feel much better lying down flat than sitting up or standing. Like um, people who are in the stages of this, 
are busy with their kids, their work, whatever. And they'll be like, well, if I get home and I just lay down for 10, 15 minutes, they don't feel all their energy back or their fatigue back, but they feel a lot better. Just the fact that when they lie down, it's an orthostatic thing. And there's something called pot syndrome, which is kind of can be one of this underlying subset of this going on. So that's a really good question you had to differentiate is it chronic fatigue some syndrome or something minor, but any of the minor things that seem to take too long are yellow flags that we want to, you know, prevent something from progressing. Because if you're already experiencing some of those, you know, I just, you feel tired longer than you think you should. You don't have the amount of energy you think you should. Well, you're more susceptible to a major emotional event boom, could put you into chronic fatigue. An injury could put you into chronic fatigue. You know, some type of physical accident or, or major hormonal change. That's the other one. Because pregnancy, uh, women after they, you know, give birth, they're at a high risk for developing chronic fatigue and also perimenopause and menopausal women. Because the majority of the population that, that gets diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome is like 30 to 60. Anybody can get it, kids can get it, you know, the elderly can get it. It can happen anytime and generally because of underlying causes. But women are two to four times more likely than men and it's more that middle age. John, you're so lucky here. Can... Sorry. <laughs> So I was just going to say, what kind of set, um, testings do you need to do? Like, you know, you think you're having chronic fatigue. You don't know for sure because not everyone says those things, you yep. know, and they're not aware of it. That's not in their vocabulary. But when you go see your doctor, what kind of tests can he do for you? And can he find out if it's yeah, so chronic fatigue? That is excellent. It's also a disease of exclusion. So <sighs> Western medicine, literally, if you look it up, it'll say there are no tests to diagnose chronic fatigue syndrome. Well, look at it from a functional medicine standpoint, which is looking how the body functions, what is not working well. Now you're gonna start looking at what are potential underlying causes, and then we're gonna test for those potential underlying causes. So direct testing could be, you know, someone's vitamin D level, highly lean. You know, they need to be in an upper range of vitamin D. So not just in range, we want them in upper range. We want to know where they're at and what we need to do about it. What are their B12 levels? Then we do check hormone panels. What's going on with their hormones? Is something excess, even younger women, excess testosterone causes serious problems. You know, PCOS, uh, too low of estrogen, too low of progesterone. And then when women go into menopause, that's a whole nother game to look at. And those will also affect. We need to look at gut markers. Do they have leaky gut? Markers of inflammation. So on blood work, something called C-reactive protein, sedimentation rate are very important to look at besides basic blood work. So even basic blood work, something called CDC and CMP, within those reference ranges, you can look for patterns. So when a doctor might say everything's quote normal, a trained eye can look at that and go, well, this is on the high end and this part is on the low end which is actually a precursor to heading toward an inflammatory situation, which that person's already feeling. That's why they're in the office. But yet there's no disease associated with it yet, but there truly is. So we wanna look at those, those basic markers. We look at ferritin because anemia, having low iron can also make people feel very similar to this and can trigger a cascade of events. Mm -hmm. um, some of those factors that could be why they're getting chronic fatigue can be genetic. So we look at family history. You know, does a close relative, mother, sister, aunt, someone have it? But it could be environmental as well. The genetic piece, but a, a linked one scientifically is the MTHFR gene having a mutation. And there's like 60 mutations and that deals with your ability to metabolize folate, which if it doesn't do it well, you get a lot of inflammation in your body. I'm just going to shorten that one up, but that is a precursor. If you have that, you need to, that's something to test for. So one of the labs is looking at, do they have this MTHFR gene mutation? So then the other um, factors, so thyroid, we look at thyroid testing. Are they subclinical hypothyroid, meaning they fall in those ranges, but it doesn't look good. It's not optimal. Um, where are they heading to? Do they have antibodies going on? Um, what toxicities? Could they have? You know, look at their environment. 
Are there environmental toxicity? Could there be industrial chemical exposures? Are there molds? Are there heavy metals? So depending on someone's health history, because we take a thorough health history, where do we want to test? That'll lead to other testing as well. It's interesting that you say that, you know, that there's no specific test, but to test for other markers. Yeah. And one of the things that we, I was learning in school is that chronic fatigue is actually, um, it's a sign of many different things that are happening, right? It's not just exactly. one, one thing or the other. It's actually a, a culmination of many different things. And so that's why it makes sense to be actually testing for your thyroid, your other hormones, you know, all these other markers that you've mentioned, it actually makes a lot of sense because chronic fatigue alone is no indicator of nothing, really. Yeah, multifunctional. It, yeah, it's an indicator of everything. Exactly, exactly. It is literally little things that become big things that have been breaking down or imbalanced over time. And you're walking this tightrope throughout your life. And that's why medically, when they look at it, they think there's some, some major trigger that caused it to happen. Well, that was just literally the tipping point or the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, those things were there. So when you have minor symptoms, not such severe pain that you're debilitated, because this can be a debilitating disease. It can disrupt your life. People lose their jobs, messes up with their relationships all these things and there's many things they can work on to one find the root cause so that in and of itself can be addressed the thyroid the hormones the gut you know address insulin resistance we look at adrenal function something that is called hpa access dysfunction hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access dysfunction you know what is going on so fixing those things but on their own their own sleep hygiene even if they're having problems sleeping, there's a lot they can do to create a routine and make it conducive to sleep and help their body you know, get into a better sleeping situation while you're repairing those things. Changing your diet, learning what foods cause inflammation overall in general. But there are foods particular to people's situation, to their genetics, to their blood type, to other factors going on that may be healthy for one person and then unhealthy for someone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a sidebar, because I get this question a lot, I love avocados, I think they're a wonderful fruit, but people who have high histamine, because I do have a lot of people with inflammation and fatigue mm -hmm. and chronic problems and gut problems, and they forget about histamine foods, that those can create problems. And it's not like you can't maybe someday have an avocado, and there's also an enzyme that you can take and, and very specific for breaking that down. And you can actually, that's another test marker, the DAO um, enzyme to look for if you have it. But so that's an example of there may be healthy foods that you're eating every day because you're following a certain great healthy diet and it's hurting you that mm -hmm. you might need to. So that's where that interaction with your doctor and looking at those, some of those markers we're talking about and maybe some other specific markers you know, figuring out how do we balance the health of your body. And as you, know, as you mentioned in the beginning, my, my uh, love for iodine and the research for iodine, how critical iodine is, is the big piece of the puzzle to help the body function appropriately. It doesn't heal the body. There's all kinds of markers like we just talked about. But if you don't have appropriate levels of iodine for your thyroid, for your gut, for your endocrine system, they're not going to function optimally no matter what else we throw at it or do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this time of year, like you mentioned, it, it, it's it's everyone's a lot under a lot of stress. We're we're running around trying to find those last shopping, you know, uh, stores and gifts and everything like that. Um, is there something, do you see chronic fatigue kind of being a cycle through the year because of things like this kind of maybe ramps up to more stress, less sleep? you're overexerting, like we're, we're shoveling snow, depending where you live in the country, yep. or where in the world, you might have to deal with snow every day. So uh, do you see this like with with people coming to see you that it's it's more during like the summer, or the winter, or, or is it pretty well even? No, no, you're absolutely right. That's kind of one reason why we picked December for this, to create awareness. So, you know, make sure you're trying to address these other things, your diet, your sleep, your stress levels, because what tends to happen is people push through and they push through and they push through, they push through the holidays 
And then come January, they usually feel crummy. One, they gained weight, you know, their diet, they, they feel fatigued and stressed and they just blame it on the holidays. What do they do? They start some crazy diet, generally not a good one, some weight loss diet, and they start exercising like a maniac. And exercise exertion, you know, being over fatigued is like one of the worst things you can do for chronic fatigue syndrome. And it usually makes people more ill and more fatigued. And it really seems to be more kind of the end of January, February, the winter months with, again, other you know, confounding factors like low vitamin D, you know, but all the stress of the holidays, it really seems to be much worse or highlighted coming in, trickling in February, March, a much bigger concern at that time of year. I mean, yeah, it can be any time of the year, you know, people come in because they're coming in for hormone issues or thyroid issues. And that's something else that's on their list. But the, the, that chronic fatigue, this severe problem, it is much worse in the winter. At least it seems to rear its head more often in the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, you're talking about vitamin D and how it really plays a role, especially in the winter months. I was, um, I was actually reading this article by Dr. Mark Heyman, um, so that there's like this new study saying that just even 2000 units of IU um, of vitamin D a day for a week actually has a huge significant improvement in you know like your sleep in your um in your healing recovery so if you've had any injuries or anything like that just a week um and that has a significant difference so if we were to just take vitamin d alone i mean and based on that study that that actually goes to tell you that it has a long-term benefit to it and we Absolutely. know that vitamin D is one of those vitamins that we do need for chronic fatigue, um, right? Because it does it does so much for not just our hormones, our bones, our energy levels. It does so much that we already know of. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so that's fantastic. And 2,000 IU a day, um, I would say nearly everybody without any issue could always take the 2,000 IU a day because many studies support that that's what we need. Mm -hmm. So with that study, we don't know what those people's original vitamin D levels are in their blood because that's a big reference range. And for especially chronic fatigue, you want to be in even fibromyalgia and those are comorbidities with chronic fatigue. We want to be on the upper range, like 70, 70 to 80 is really showing more healthful. So one of the blood tests we talked about, checking your, your vitamin D levels in your blood. So you might fall in range, it's 30 to 100. You might be 42 and your doctor gives you the gold star, but you don't feel great. You may need to bring your blood levels up much, 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 much higher. I would work with your doctor on that because you're gonna have to take a higher dose for a certain period of time and then you recheck your blood. But taking that 2000 IU a day, which is what your, your body really needs, at least that amount, is, is already alleviating a bunch of, stress and pain so vitamin d is definitely one of the key you know supplements to take it's good to know your levels the same with thing with b12 b12 is very important especially with the neurological functions because they, there's a neurological basis with this pain for the chronic fatigue so it's good to know your levels and again you want to optimize that which is higher so short term might be a high dose and then a daily dose um, fish oil has a lot of anti-inflammatory research those essential fatty acids. So also eating things high and even the plant-based omega-3s, like your chia seeds, your flax seeds, your hemp seeds are fantastic. Your sacha inchi nuts, those are just wonderful. Some walnuts, but getting the fish oil because it's all about the um, type of the essential fatty acids. So kind of blend it all up. Um, other things, taking a, an everyday multi is critical because there's no way you're getting all your trace minerals, your regular minerals, all your B vitamins in the right proportions, you're just not, no matter how wonderful you think you're eating, your food supply sadly is not as great as it should be. So kind of filling in some of those gaps that you're not even aware, some of the, the fatigue, the stress, the pain may lessen just with that alone, which is, which is amazing to do that. Then there's a little bit more advanced taking some stuff that supports some mitochondrial support, something called NAD plus, um, you know, or some extra, some niacin, and you know, doing some other mitochondrial support. So there's, and check an immune system, you might need various herbs um, that does wonders because having 
underlying infections that weren't addressed, um, Epstein-Barr is, is highly linked to chronic fatigue syndrome. Different um, hepatitis viruses, um, HPV viruses that people are dealing with, but it's weak in their immune system. So there's various herbs that can really help with that. So identifying what those are and taking specific herbs can, can do wonders as well to alleviate a lot of that pain. Now that you're actually trying to eat better, you're trying to sleep better, you're um, drinking lots of water, what yes. other things and supplements, what other things can you do to uh, support yourself? Through, through so, yes. And so in addition to those things, one, it's a graded exercise routine you should do. And it means very gentle, very, very gentle. In our minds, because interestingly enough, a lot of people who get diagnosed with chronic fatigue were, I mean, it's funny to say, highly functional people. They were very active people. A lot of them were athletes. They were athletes. So in our head, you know, we know what we can do. We think we know what our body's capable of. I used to run, you know, 5Ks or a marathon and, you know, people who did all these other things or they're rowing or bike competitions or soccer or whatever sport, you know, weightlifting, they were really good at it. And then something happened and triggered this chronic fatigue. So they were like, I'm gonna get back to my old self and my old shape. That's the worst thing you can do. If you are in a chronic fatigue state, addressing what, you, you know, like you said, the whole lifestyle piece, you know, get those supplements that are important in you, check for the other underlying things. But you do have to bring in gentle movement because you can get the fibromyalgia, you know, you can get your body stiffening up even more. So doing um, very gentle exercises, walking, your yoga, uh, breathing techniques have shown to be a lot of improvement, but that's more of a relaxation technique. Um, mobility classes that are gentle mobility, meaning they work through the joints. All their movements are very slow, a Tai Chi kind of thing. So if you do yoga, it needs to be a gentle yoga, not like the super hot fast yoga, anything like that. But as you slowly get stronger, because what happens with real chronic fatigue is they will hurt excessively post-exertional exercise. That's one of the criteria for a real diagnosis, that they should only feel maybe tired that day after and feel better the next day. If they do a class or they do a YouTube video or whatever it is, and they're tired for five days or, or more, they did too much. They might be able to do it again, but they have to back off. So that is a really, really critical part. Another key thing is cognitive behavioral therapy has research on it. It's learning how your thinking affects your feeling and working with a professional. Because I mean, that makes logical sense. Like, oh, I'll just talk to myself with affirmations and stuff. And those are good. And you might be prescribed to do that. But you want to work with a professional that knows cognitive behavioral therapy can really help lower people's pain levels and their fatigue levels. It's fascinating. So that's another really thing. So the graded exercise therapy, relaxation techniques, meditation, lowering your stress level, saying no, don't do all those things, all the holiday parties, all that stuff. It's okay. You need to put your health first so you can continue on the rest of the year and not be those people who are going to start falling down the end of January, February, and March, like domino effect. You don't want that. Um, those, those are more, you know, what you can do. Yeah. I think you like this time of year, you know, it's, we're, we're like bears, you know, we, we think circadian rhythm, we think we should be hibernating and slowing down. And, but what we're doing is we're, we're eating more, <laughs> we're partying it up, we're staying up late, <laughs> we're probably not exercising as much, right, because of the weather or what it may be. So yeah. we're, we're actually going in two different directions than what we should be taking care of our bodies with. And I think this kind of leads into what you're saying. That's why people go into a new year with new resolutions, because they know that they've gone through such a, a, a month or two of this stressful fatigued period yeah. um and they and their their body's like no 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 you need to slow down you need to kind of give me a break oh yeah definitely definitely i'm trying to think are there any other last things i really wanted to mention um i think we covered it all i've got my uh note but overall just keeping that stress down because that is one of the main main triggers um but if you have any quote minor symptoms of pre-chronic fatigue syndrome because again that's a very severe high you know pain threshold but you're just tired all the time and you feel fatigued and you're not getting good sleep 
you know, it may not be chronic fatigue syndrome, but there's other things going on. Um, you feel, you know, bloated and have digestive issues. You've got your muscles just seem to ache a little bit more than usual. You're going to want to seek out your functional medicine doctor and discuss what's going on, get a better evaluation, maybe have some of those markers run, some basic ones first, and you can go into more detail based on the symptoms and what's going on. So you catch things right away and don't move into the chronic fatigue because it is classified as chronic. And medically, they say there's quote, no cure. You're going to have and be like this for the rest of your life. I do believe you can heal significantly from it where you do not have symptoms, but a lot has to be done in order to do that. Well, that was an amazing show. Thank you, Dr. Teresa. I mean, we could keep awesome. going on and on and on, um, but we definitely have come to that time where we do have to say goodbye. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be doing our Christmas episode. So come in, join us. Wear red if you can. And then next Thursday is going to be our New Year's episode. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone for tuning in. If you haven't already, please follow us. We are the Healthy Way Vibes on all platforms. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks, Dr. Teresa.